Greetings. Right, people have been asking me what have I been doing because I have lost weight, I am feeling fitter and I'm feeling so much better than I was the f last two weeks in January and the first two weeks in Feb. I got ill for a week but then I used that as a bloody excuse to start doing nothing. I ate rubbish, loads of crisps, loads of chocolate, loads of nonsense, hardly ate properly and I put a stone on in four weeks and I felt rubbish, no motivation, absolutely crap, couldn't be arsed and my biggest reason for just thinking come on Sally because I know nobody's going to come and do it for me, I had to do it myself, I had to look for my own motivation and inspiration and the biggest reason is because you get low days anyway and when you're feeling like that, and when you're sort of sabotaging, not even sabotaging, but when you're masking those feelings with food and chocolate and you're not even enjoying it, it just makes everything worse. And so I slip right down below the line of life, you know, that number one to ten, you're below it. So then when shit happens, you feel even worse. And I thought, Do you know what, I've got enough on, I'm really busy, I need to feel better just to function and just to feel happier and so that was my main reason for doing it and thank god i did because my mum fell a few weeks ago if you've been following me you might know she's in hospital and she's coming home next week and having all that to deal with and all the stuff that we need to sort out for the house and stuff and just to get her home if i'd have been feeling that rubbish way below the line of life the only way is to continue down so my biggest reason for making the change of continually looking after myself and being asked to get out of bed and not press the snooze button and do a workout first thing in the morning is to get myself above that line of life to be feeling mentally stronger so um after i'd put my stone on i just thought right that's it and i just thought i'm gonna go cold turkey and i cut out all sugar for two and a half months, literally, and I mean all sugar. Um, I even cut out fruit for the last month. And that's all right, it might seem a bit extreme, but I loved it. I loved experimenting with high protein stuff without using whey protein powders, because I don't want to do that. So I, the only thing I focused on was increasing my protein. I'm not interested in counting calories or macros or anything like that. I just, it's too much of a diet industry for me. Um, but you do you, if that works for you, you do it. But I hate feeling like I'm on a diet because I know what I'll do, I'll be brilliant at it and then I'll rebel and eat shit. And so I just don't do it. So obviously I use the word diet, like just the terminology of what you actually put in your mouth. So that's what a diet is to me now. And so I just cut out all the crap, it, literally all the sugar. And that meant all the sugar in processed food, in bread, in crisps, Tyrrells, by the way, their flavours have sugar in, but the plain ones don't. Little things like that. Um, but then eventually I cut out all the processed food. So I wasn't even having crisps, no chocolate, no ice cream for a couple of months. And I just started to feel so much better. And then I started moving with intention, with consistency, instead of half arse and everything. Uh, and I've been doing that for the past, ever since February. And the difference is mad. It really is so... I wanted to give myself some accountability. So after I'd, when I started reintroducing the ice cream, that's always the first thing to come back in. But I, my little rules I have now, and it's not even a rule, it's a desire, a genuine desire, so it's not a rule, is I don't want crisps. I don't want to go back to crisps, because I used to eat quite a lot of crisps, especially big bags of Tyrrells at a weekend. So I don't want crisps anymore. I don't want shop-bought bread of any description. I don't want shop-bought ice creams anymore, so no more Magnums and tubs of Ben and & Jerry's and Hagen dazs Not that I had Ben & Jerry's, but I'd have other stuff. So no more stuff like that. I just don't want it. Um, and no more crappy chocolates, no more Freddo bars and dairy milk and all that sort of stuff. But I will have a Lindor ball and I will have some other chocolate, but I don't have it that often. But, you know, I do love an ice cream and I will have a pizza and I'll go out and eat a pudding, you know, so I'm not sugar free anymore and that's fine i've just got a real balance which i never thought i'd have without dieting as well so anyway i'm going to get onto my chart because a lot of you've been asking so after i'd done that first couple of months i thought do you know what i'm going to focus on 100 days of stuff that i want to achieve that's going to help me make me feel better because i want to live above that line of life i want to live above it i don't want to live below it scale of one to ten because if you're living below the line of life, which I was probably on about a four in January and February, because then when shit happens, like mum fell a few weeks ago and she's still in hospital, she's coming out this week. 
all that to deal with is big. So if I'd have been down at a four, I'd have just fallen lower. And that's just an awful thought. And I've been down there before and I had depression. It's horrible. So my line of life, I like to be above a five. Sometimes you're at a nine, ten. Doesn't happen that often. But, you know, I'm quite happy at a six or a seven. Because then if you fall, you come down. But you st it's still manageable. And that is my biggest reason. It is not to get in skinny jeans. It's not to be eight stone seven like that had ever happen on the scales, it is to keep myself above that line of life. And in January and February, I was so shittily low, I was definitely virgin on another depressive episode. But I thought, come on, Sally, you know what to do. And I started doing like Joe Wicks's menopause, weights workouts, and that got me back into it, which was amazing. And then I've done all sorts. I've gone on to body.com, which I love, you know, they all, I'm doing Sean T25 at the moment. And then I do my own stuff, obviously. But I sometimes just like to be inspired by other people. So anyway, this chart, I designed 100 days from shit to shiny in 100 days to give me some inspiration and motivation and accountability for myself. I told Sam what I wanted on it. He did it on Excel or Word. I've no idea about stuff like that. And... There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 10 things that I tick every day. I've got my trusty big red and green. So all the greens is when I've done it. And also I'm a bit close, aren't I? And all the reds is when I haven't done it. I'm gonna tell you something very important, how to use a tick sheet when I've explained what it is, because it is very important, I think. We do it in the membership as well. They have a 70 day tick sheet in there. But anyway, so the first one is exercise. Exercise days one to 50, and this is day 51 to 100. As you can see, I'm almost halfway through. So exercise, that's got to be a minimum of 20 minutes exercise every day. Now, four or five times a week, I like to do a harder form of exercise, whether that's the Peloton, whether it's a hit, whether it's a cycle, whatever it is. Or, and then the other times I'll do a 20 minute stretch. So some form of 20 minute exercise at least every day. Look, I've missed one, two, three, four, five days I've missed. That's all in the last 48 days. That's consistency. Walking, Nordic walking I do, as you know. Not missed a single day and that's a minimum of half an hour, usually an hour. Uh, or two half hour sessions. So I've not missed a single day of Nordic walking and that's consistency. I'm not saying this to blow my own trumpet, I'm just reminding us what consistency is. So cold water dipping, that's another one. Five minutes in my um, loomy tub outside. It's getting a bit warmer, but it still feels cold. Look at that, I missed one, two, three, four, five, six, eight there, up to day 30. But look at that. I missed a whole week on the trot. I remember just saying to Simon, don't want to do it today. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. But we'd been to London here and it was bank holiday weekend. Came back on the Tuesday and I couldn't be asked, So I never did it. And because I never did it, I never did it again the next day and the next day and the next day. And this is what I love about these charts. It's all about awareness. So I'll explain that in a moment. Now, the other one, that I've put two, out of all these 10 things, I've picked two that I'm not going to miss. Unless I die or something really serious happens, I am not going to miss them. I didn't want to do that with all of them because I like to allow some flexibility, otherwise it becomes a toxic goal. So the other one was my belief coding, self-facilitation. It only takes me about 15 minutes. Self-facilitation, I do it every morning and I've not missed a single day. So I'm delighted with that. The next one we have two litres of water. Two litres of water, look at that. Did, missed four days, another five there, and then three there. But on the whole, I've been doing my two litres of water every day. But I know I'm feeling a bit crap when I stop even drinking my water. And then reading 10 pages of a book. I've done that most days. Now. How many books? Look at them. I've got them all over the house. Loads of books that I want to read. Self-development books, inspirational books from other people. And I just never make time to do it. I never prioritise it. 
So I read 10 pages a day. I've read three books while this has been on. Three books, because quite often that 10 pages leads to more. And I make time for it instead of scrolling the phone like this. You know, do your 10 pages a day. And then this one here is I have the Mind Valley app. The Mind Valley app. It's a bit of an investment every year, but it's all about learning. I've just done Jim Quick's, the super brain one. Can you tell? <laughs> You're supposed to be able to remember things. <laughs> it has helped actually. Some of the techniques to learn to remember is just wonderful. It really is. And I can remember, I know now the first 20 elements of the periodic table. I tell you, and I've got a story behind it, but that's a whole other video. So look at that. A week of can't be asked. I'm not doing it. Sometimes they think, oh, I'm not doing it. I can't be bothered. And then here, but that's because the app ran out and it's, it's of an investment to renew it. And I decided to renew it. They gave us a 50% discount uh, because I'd been a member before for a year. And it ran out and I thought, I'm quite glad I'm not doing it anymore, but I've taken it up again. I've started again. And then the next one, I hope this isn't boring you. If it is, then you won't be watching. You'll have switched off. So the next one is a ritual for my face. Hence why I look 24. <laughs> a ritual for my face. And that usually involves, do you want me to show you what it involves? Wait there. I'm just going into a bedroom. Wait there. Wait there. I'll be one minute. Don't switch off. Don't switch off. <laughs> That's what it involves. Every night when I'm reading my 10 pages in bed, I put my light salon mask on, infrared. It's supposed to have so many health benefits. <laughs> Can you see me? So look, ritual. I got a bit complacent with it here at the beginning, but then look at that consistency there. Missed a couple of days when I was in London. And then look, more consistency with one little gap. You know, that's probably just because I forgot. So consistency is key. If anybody wants to know, you can get these anywhere now, but this is one from the light salon. So, um, and then the next one, this is a very important one. This one alone affects all the others and how I do them and if I do them. It has such a knock-on effect on all the others. My phone. And what I mean by this, no phone, no taking my phone up to bed. No taking my phone up to bed. Now look at this, started well, four days I thought, fuck it. And then I had a good patch, and then another couple, but then more, can you see the consistency starting to come? I only miss a couple of days here and then, and look at that, it's about the last 10 days. No phone in bed. So if I take my phone to bed, literally I can be on it for ages, think oh, I'll just check Facebook, just check Instagram, oh, I'll just check my email. Check him email at bloody half nine at night, 10 o'clock at night. And then you've got somebody else's problem in your head. You know, looking at Julie's older pictures and I don't even know her. I thought she just reminded me of somebody else and I thought I know her and then realised I don't. But I look at all her pictures anyway. And then my wedding that she went to a year before. I'm taking all that in my dreams. You don't need it. And so if I take my phone to bed, I don't read. I turn my light off late and then I fail on the next one and then I start my day feeling a bit shit about myself. So that has been the biggest game changer, not taking my phone to bed. And then the final one is my sleep. Really focusing on 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. sleep or quarter past 10 till quarter to six is sometimes I do. Um, but round about that, what I mean is I don't want to be still awake at half 11 at night. If I am, I don't want to be lying in bed at seven in the morning. So that's a fail for me. And none of this, oh, there's no such thing as failure. It's like, I never get that. There is. You can fail exams. You fail your driving test. Oh, it's just learning. No, you failed your driving test. I can say that because I never did. <laughs> oh, dear. But anyway, or oh, failing anything. Yes, on these, I'm failing on the on my little target, but I don't mind failure. Failure is where you do learn. And I'm going to explain in a moment, I know it's very long, but I'm going to explain in a moment the importance of doing this red and green business. So look at that, three and then four, I didn't manage it. And then another six there. Look at that big patch in the middle where I was going to bed later. And then 
I'm getting more consistency because this is, oh, and then this little column at the bottom is when I have a clean sweep. So look at that, about three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 days where I've done the whole lot. So that when I come to do the bottom half of it, I am definitely gonna focus on getting more of those. Notice there's no food on here. There's no, no sugar. There's no, no whatever. There's no bread, no crisps, no calories. Did I make the calories? Did I do make the macros? Did I make the protein thing? I'm not interested in counting the food because why? If I do this, I feel like Michael Fish. If I do this, when this big, you know, big, what the isobars are coming and it's gonna give us a bit of red or a bit of green. When I do all that from time to time, <laughs> so I'm getting on my nerves now. When I do all that, my desire to eat processed food and crisps and chocolate in bed at night or wherever, or on the train or in the car, shoving it in your mouth before you get home. If I do all that, my desire to do those things drastically diminishes. And that is a fact. And that is the best diet you can do. Looking after yourself first and then changing your genuine desire to want to make different choices. That is the diet plan that I offer. And that's what I've always offered. But it's really hard to get people to understand it sometimes because you're in a position at the moment where you just can't be asked, and that's not your fault. We're advertised to, we're so, if you go into a supermarket, it's horrifying, frightening. You've got the first two aisles of fruit and veg and meat and fish, and then everything else is in boxes. Everything, everything is in boxes with labels on and additives and all that nonsense. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll eat, you know, I'm not a, I'm not the processed food place. I'll still eat a bit here and there, but it is so rare. And then you've got the eggs at the other end. But apart from, you know, and the nuts and seeds and all that sort of stuff. But everything else is in packets and boxes. So my point is, if you do all this and look after yourself, you are so less likely to want to start eating. Because let me remind you, nobody, and I've done this many times the, over the years, nobody stands in the kitchen eating four rounds of toast with thick butter on and a half a wall's viennetta while they're deciding what to have for the tea if they're having happy thoughts and looking after themselves. It just doesn't happen. When I'm achieving all this, I don't want to do that, but I will go out for a lovely meal and have a lovely... I went out to a lovely restaurant called Heft <laughs> and had the most glorious pie and northern gravy and a cup of soup, white onion soup. Couldn't give a shit about the calories. Couldn't care less that there was pastry on it because it was lovingly made at a beautiful restaurant. So that to me, the calories are the same as what you'd buy in the shop or at Greg's or whatever, but it's how it's made that's the difference for me. So anyway, the importance, I've nearly finished, the importance of this red and green. It's not about having a perfect green chart because in my mind, that is not reality. It is not about having a perfect green chart because that is like doing a strict diet. I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to it. I'm going to stick to it, stick to it. And then what happens when it's finished? What happens when the 100 days is finished? If I have a perfect green chart, the shit would hit the proverbial fan for me. I've done sugar challenges before. I did a 18 month one where I didn't have any just chocolate and, and that sort of stuff. I've done a three month challenge before with no sugar. Just, oh, I'm not having it, not having it. And then after that, that was it. The floodgates opened, but I've not done that this time. And the difference is because I journaled on it. I journaled on the sugar. Why am I eating that? For two weeks, I allowed myself everything. Once I decided I was going to make a change, instead of the old me going, oh, I'm going to have to start on Monday. Simon, we're going to have to clear out the cupboards. So we're going to start on Monday. And then Monday comes and it's the most depressing day of the year because you're starting a diet. I'm not doing that. So I allowed myself for another two weeks to eat what I wanted but I wrote about it every night not a food diary with calories and stuff but I said what I'd eaten why did I eat that did I want it did I enjoy it with no judgment whatsoever and just doing that for two weeks has been the biggest game changer for me because it's changed my desire I can't wait for my ice cream at the weekend I can't wait for it 
honestly I'm excited but I don't want it now I genuinely don't because I've, I want to feel vibrant and lively and sugar no matter how lovely it is makes you feel shit sometimes not on the time but the next day you know who's not had a sugar hangover but anyway this is all about creating awareness like look at that there my mind valley app I didn't do it for a week so instead of throwing the towel and going oh fuck it I'm shit I just thought why am I not doing it why am I not doing I'm not actually liking all those reds right I need to get back to it I want to get back to it not a need a want if you ever hear yourself another top tip so it's going to be a longer video this another top tip for you if you ever hear yourself saying I need to drink more water I need to stop drinking I need to give up sugar I need 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 it's never going to work because you don't need to do any of that you don't need why do you need it nobody else gives a shit whether you eat it or not so you don't need to do it because if you need to do it you've got no motivation or accountability to do it so instead from now on please 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 swap that need for a want i want to give up sugar i want to stop drinking i want to start moving my body i want to do that workout in the morning because after a period of time, so let's say, stop eating chocolate for a bit, say, or no, let's say the workout, say, I want to work out in the morning, I want to work out, and you say, I need to work out, I need to work out. After a long period of time, or even just a few days, if you keep saying to yourself, I want to work out, I want to work out, and then you're not doing it, you make yourself look a bit of a tit, because you think, well, why am I not doing it? I'll tell you why, it's because you don't want it enough. And that's a real big wake up call and a slap in the face with a, I'm just talking shit to myself. Do I want it or do I not? And if you don't want to do it, then just stop saying it and don't do it. Don't work out, don't give up sugar unless you really want to. But drop the word need and start using the word want. It makes the biggest difference. But again here, my sleep, I was getting pissed off for myself that I wasn't putting enough effort in because that's what obviously is the odd day when stuff happens like when my mum fell and stuff I was it was late you know so all this and then I thought no and look I've, look I can you see I'm getting more green more green and it is not about being perfect it is about getting the reds and then you being able to make a conscious decision of which way you want it to carry on going. Do you want more reds? Are you willing to accept them? Or actually, do you want more greens? But it is not about being perfect. Do you know where the biggest win is? The biggest win isn't getting a green sheet. The biggest win isn't getting to 10 stone. The biggest win in none of those. The biggest win is when you get a period of reds and you can turn it into a green. That is winning. It really is. And that creates consistency. So, yes, I could have done more on some of those because I remember this cold dip situation. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And I don't mind that. I don't have an issue when people say, do you know what, Sally? I don't want to do your stupid workout. I don't want to get up and walk because I'd rather stay in bed. Full respect. Absolutely admire them. But it's when people go, oh, I really want to do it, but I didn't have time. And do you know what? Don't even get me on. I've just done a live membership on Monday and I lost my absolute blob just because I feel really strongly about it, about people saying they don't have time and yet um, the average person scrolls for two hours a day, scrolls for two hours a day. And that equates, if you include waking hours, about four and a half days a month of your life is given to scrolling, just like that. And I'm not talking about the really inspiring Facebook groups that you might be in. But I'm talking about, you know, we've all done it. Can't do it, can't get off, can't get off. Oh, now there's a recipe for that. Oh, there's a funny cat video. Oh, I like that hairstyle. Oh, what's she doing? I'm talking about that sort of scrolling. And if you can limit it, so do you know what? I'm going to do it for 20 minutes today. Great. But it's when it just takes over. So please, please don't be scrolling and then say that you don't have time to go out for a walk because it's just a nonsense. You obviously don't want it enough. And if you keep saying you don't have time, here's another top tip. Swap it for, I was going to go out for a walk, but it's not important to me. Rather than, I was going to go out for a walk, but I didn't have time. Because there's no comeback on that. I didn't have time, everybody says it. They just accept it. And you believe your own bollocky bullshit anyway. So there's no even an argument in your head. But if you start saying to yourself, I was going to do a walk today, Simon, but I didn't, I, it wasn't important enough to me. You think, ooh, that feels a bit awkward on myself. Mm. 
is it not? Do I not want it enough? Why, why am I saying this? You know, you've got to then question it in your head and that's when change happens. And a lot of people can't get to that stage and that's why they stay stuck. But if you can start owning your choices, own, this is why I love these charts, owning your choices, you know, honestly, you start to see the magic happen and that is how I'm changing at the moment. I'm not counting anything. I'm not doing a diet. I'm just eating well most of the time. And the only thing I'm focusing on, if I'm focusing on anything, is upping my protein and getting loads of different vegging. And it's bloody ace, honestly. I never, ever want to go back to Weight Watch as a Slimming World Weight Watch. When they were, you know, when I used to do that, they'd given avocado nine points and yet a Mars bar four, no, five it was. So an avocado was nearly twice as many points value as an as a Mars bar. And you only get 18 a day. So literally nearly half your points have gone on one avocado. That's why you won't get a Weight Watcher touching an avocado. It's a nonsense. And we've been brainwashed all these years. So it's not your fault. So let go of the guilt and any shame you might have around your choices and just choose one thing you don't have to do 10 choose one thing that you can start making a difference with and creating consistency and do you know what i'd suggest it is if you want a little hand i would suggest getting up and going for a walk in the morning just 20 minutes 10 minutes out 10 minutes back and if you want two things the next important thing will be drinking your two liters of water and then once you start doing those two things i tell you the magic starts to happen. I've seen it so many times before. Why not create your own list? So that's it. Shit to shine in 100 days. I've got another 50 and I can't wait to see the results. Me just plodding on, having some shit days because that's life. That's real. So that's not life getting in the way. That's like, oh, I'm getting, do you know what? I'm on one today. Life getting in the way. How many times do I hear people say that? I don't understand it. It makes no sense whatsoever. So I've got to apologise because my stand isn't quite high enough. So I'm having to stoop. I feel like I've got a parachute on the back. You know, so when you hear somebody, oh, do you know what? I was doing your workouts or I was doing this and I was doing that. And I was doing really well, but then life got in the way. So then they stopped. What do, what do you actually mean by life gets in the way? L listen. Life cannot get in your way. This is your life every single day. It unfolds, it happens, shit happens, good thing happens. It doesn't get in the way. Life isn't some inconvenience or some excuse to be made. It is just life. So my mum falling and going into hospital, me going to London, you know, all stuff that happens, you know, crap that's happened at work, stuff that I've had to do, stuff to organise for my book and we've been, we were really, really busy. That's not life getting in the way. That's just life happening. So stop using it as an excuse and just accept that this is your life. And when I'm talking now, I love doing this. It is, what date is it? I don't know what date it is. I can't see. Yeah. What? It's the 4th of June and it is 11.55 a.m. on the 4th of June, 2024. This is my life right now. This is my life. 4th of June, 11.55am, and it's a Tuesday. How many more 4ths of Junes am I going to have in my life? Nobody knows. None of us know. So let's seize the days. Let's seize the 4th of Junes. Let's make better choices that are going to allow us to thrive and just feel better because shit is going to happen. You are going to have days where you just feel so low so let's control the stuff we can control and that's what we put into our bodies and how we move these glorious machines of ours literally these beautiful bodies that we are gifted with get us out of bed every morning it doesn't have to be a size 10 genuinely it doesn't it doesn't have to be perfect your boobs don't have to be up by your double chin it doesn't have to be anything like that but just be grateful that you are gifted this body and you get to move it every day. And so sadly, so many of us just don't do that. We take it for granted. And I know I'm probably really getting on your wick now, but literally it's the fourth, how many more fourth of Junes are we gonna have? And if you know me, if you follow me for a while, you'll know I want to dance the funky chicken on my 100th birthday party. And that is my lifelong goal, apart from getting my book. 
into WH Smith's airport, which I know is the biggest moonshot goal ever. I think that's going to be harder than getting to 100 and dance the funky chicken. And it really is because to do that, I've got to get a proper publisher and to get and, and also getting an end to WH Smith's is going to be a nightmare because do you know I want to be in WH Smith's with my book? Because all this stuff I've talked about is in my book. There's not a single diet plan in it, not anything. No counting, nothing's off limits. It's all about this sort of stuff. And I want women to pick it up as the holiday read, get over yourself, ditch the diet and start living a life beyond belief. And I want them to read it on their sun loungers, have epiphany after epiphany after epiphany and come home and never diet again like the Weight Watchers and Slimming World things, and those diet clubs which have you on scales. I can do a whole different video on that, as you know. So that's my dream, as well as dancing the Funky Chicken on my 100th birthday party. I want to be, I want to be thriving the last 20 years of my life, not just surviving, I want to be thriving. The decisions I make now are going to make that happen or more of a chance of making it happen. And that's why I do what I do. And that's why I will bang on till my 100th birthday party. Anybody will listen about you do not have to do. You don't have to count calories. You don't have to do all that. There's more important stuff to be thinking about and taking up your mind. Start really focusing on you. And when this cold front comes in and you will find that by the bank holiday weekend. Sorry, can't help it. <laughs> I won't make a weather reporter, but look, so I'll report back. I'll do a few more videos if you want, but they won't be this long. I think this is probably the longest pre-recorded video I've ever done. So I don't know how Instagram are going to find it. So hopefully I'll get it on. But there you have it. Any questions, just ask in the comments. So I'm off. I'm off to do another work session. This was my little break. So I'm delighted with it. And because this re sent me another one, I'm going to do it again after this one's finished. I might pick different things. You don't have to have those things. You can pick different things. So there you have it. All right, then shit to shine in 100 days with a bit of real life splattered in the middle. All right, then. So remember, you are a sum of your choices. And if you don't like where you are, look at what choices you're making. And I've just done an email about that. And look at the longer term effect on the choices you make today instead of looking how it's going to make you feel in the next 10 minutes um because that's eating the chocolate isn't it and all that sort of stuff the mindless chocolate i'm not talking about enjoying it i'm talking about when you're doing it mindlessly and hating yourself and when you don't really want it but you just can't help yourself because it feels like this big addiction it's horrible i've been there so many times and i'm glad to say i'm not there at the moment at this moment in time but this has really helped but when you are doing that, just before you do it, just ask yourself, what's this choice going to serve me like tomorrow? And just look ahead to the next day and you'll go to bed feeling a little bit more chuffed with yourself. And that is when you start getting your superpower. So what can you do each day to give yourself a little bit of chuffness? Get your 20 minute walk in, do your two litres of water. Don't take your phone to bed. You know, even those three things you will start to feel more and more chuffed every day. And that is when the magic starts to happen. And that is where your motivation comes from. Nobody is going to post you a parcel of motivation through the post. You've got to go and find it yourself. And then it comes from within. And it's finite. It doesn't last forever. So you've got to keep doing stuff. All right, then sending you a huge, huge big love. I hope that's helped. I hope it's not got on your nerves. I thought it'd be about a 10 minute video. 38 minutes if you've got to the end can I do a little just sort of test just say in the comments how many fingers I'm holding up and then I know you've watched it to the end and if you've got any questions please please ask and I'll happily answer them as best I can I want to save you one I want to get asked most the what question I get asked most online is where's my necklace from it's an online company called Rust but I've had it for about four or five years so I don't know if they're still even going so a little top tip for you there. So go on, how many fingers? And tell me what your plans are around your choices. Sending huge love. Thank you very much for being here. Ta-ta. Bye.